Welcome to The Painting Perspective. My name is Angel and I am your Friday host. And today we're going to be talking about folk magic versus ceremonial magic. Okay, so the question is, I am very much into practicing folk magic, but I am not very well versed in practicing ceremonial magic. Living in a college dorm room as I do at the moment is hard to, for me to get into the ceremonial magic, but I think I am limiting myself by practicing folk magic. How would you guys recommend I get into practicing ceremonial magic? Okay, for those who don't know what folk magic is and versus ceremonial magic, folk magic, and I'll give it to it short because a lot of people probably do know, Folk magic is more considered more traditional magic, and ceremonial magic is considered high magic. Now, I don't really go with the high, low, whatever magic. Basically, to, to break it down in an example, folk magic, if you were practicing folk magic, and you were, say you were cleaning your house, and you're sweeping, you're putting your intentions into not only cleaning out the dirt, but cleaning out the dirt energy, the negative energy, the stagnant energy, cleaning it out. And you go through this actual ritual of doing that in this in the aspect that you are intentions you're sweeping and you get rid of the dirt and you put it out either in the garden or whatever you do with it to to get it out of your house and that's it and you may go and you may do your windows the same way you may everything you may do may be just the the process of doing the job and putting your intentions into it now ceremonial magic if you were doing a cleansing of the house you may still use a broom and you may still do the you know sweep up the dirt and the dirty energy but before you do that you may do a you may call a circle and you may do a smudging in your house um, you may once you've cleansed out the last area you might put salt over your window seal and close circle yada 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 and so that would be considered ceremonial magic. It's a, it's a more of a process. It's a more in-depth process of magic than folk magic is. To me, both of them are just as uh, effective because it really depends on what, how you, you know, because how you are in in that ritual. Because you can go to a, do ceremonial magic and your heart's not totally in it, your mind's somewhere else, or what have you. And you can go through all these emotions and do all this all this ritual. And at the end, it really didn't do a whole lot. Or you can be very focused on your folk magic and sweeping, and that might be more effective. So it doesn't really matter which one you do. They're both equally, in my opinion, equally as effective. Now, anytime we get a question about uh, doing magic or practicing or anything in a dorm room or at a college, I get a little concerned because I never lived in a dorm in college, so I don't have an idea of that functionality at all. The only thing I can associate it to is when I lived with my folks, after I had moved out for a number of years, I think it was 2008 or 2009, I moved back in with my folks in Mississippi, and um, they're pretty rigid in their religion, so, and not, it's not the same as mine, so I was, I had a lot of difficulties in doing my practice, so I had to incorporate more folk magic than the ceremony of magic I was used to doing. Now, I don't think you're limiting yourself with doing folk magic. I really don't. But if you want to experience ceremonial magic, you have to take into account your environment. What is your environment allowing to you to do? So with me living with my folks, I had to do, when I did ritual that was more ceremonial, I had to do it in stages. It takes longer. It's a more frustrating process, but once you get your head around it, you can smooth out all of the, the kinks. Now, what I would do is basically I would tell my folks, I'm gonna need some privacy at this amount, this amount of time. And they knew what I, well, they knew I was doing magic or practicing my craft, but they don't want to hear about it. 
and they didn't want to deal with or you know know about it so I would do it in stages basically I would go in I would set everything up and get ready and listen <laughs> did anybody interrupt me okay so then I would call my circle call my quarters once I was done with that I would listen okay nobody's gonna bother me okay so then I would think who came to help me with my magical workings and then I would take a pause and make sure nobody was calling to me or what have you so at first it was a very difficult process and it felt you know constantly uh, there wasn't a good flow but once I got into it and I started working out the little kinks and the details and nuances, then it became much more smooth. Not as smooth as if you didn't have to worry about that. But again, you have to be really mindful of your environment and the people in your environment. And distractions. I mean, I get really distracted really easy outside when I do a ritual with my coven. Oh, bunny. Oh, bird. Oh, hummingbird. Oh, this. I mean, I have to really be careful and very, you know, focused. So. I have to take into account my environment and prepare myself mentally. I'm gonna see animals. I gotta be careful. I gotta, I gotta focus. I gotta be focused. Don't look. Don't look. But in a college environment, it's difficult. You have constant interruptions, constant um, distractions, whether it's music or, or people talking. But if you wanted to practice ceremonial magic and you wanted to get into it to see how you could incorporate it, what I would suggest is. If you can find a local store that has ritual for espots or sabbats, uh, even on college campuses, there are a lot of comp college campuses that are uh, very uh, neutral in their spirituality and they have religious groups that get together, uh, pagan groups or Wiccan groups that get together and practice different types of magic and do different classes. You can get involved with them to see how you could incorporate different little things into your practice to see if you like them and and want to incorporate more ceremonial type of things the thing is is if you haven't done ceremonial magic but you're interested in doing it then the best way to to see if it's actually going to work for you is getting involved with it and if you can only get involved with it un uninterrupted by going to a circle at maybe a pagan store or an open circle that maybe a coven is doing in a park or what have you, then I would suggest doing that so you can see how it is and if and how you can incorporate it into your practice in your current environment. Uh, for example, my mom says she's allergic to incense. I don't know how legit that is I think she just didn't want us to burn incense but she said she's allergic she's allergic so I would have to burn scented candles um, that had herbs in them or oils in them or just ones that you get at the store or what have you uh, once too many candles became an issue then I would use four candles for my elements or five candles for all my elements and then if I wanted any other candles for anything, I would get those little, the, either the tea lights or the regular ones that have the battery in them. And you can get those scented too. Uh, I don't think they give off as much of a fragrance. I haven't really tried the scented ones, so I wouldn't know. But I used them in my ceremonial magic, but I had to kind of edit them to my environment. So that's what I would suggest when it comes to practicing ceremonial magic. See where you can practice it uh, without interruption. Um, if you do know what you want to do, if you've already studied it and researched it, because most books have uh, lengthy descriptions of different things you can do in regards to, to their, um, ceremonial magic. If you've already done the research, then I would suggest doing it your practice in phases. Like I said, it takes longer and, and it gets it takes a little time to get into that rhythm, but you'll be able to practice it. Uh, the last thing that was underneath the comment, and I'm sorry, I've such a problem with my allergies, right? It says, also, any questions on the Norse gods temple being built in Iceland? Um, I know it's being built, 
because a wonderful person in my coven, their god is Odin, and they actually lived in Iceland for a good many years. So they're very excited about this. Um, and I heard it from them <laughs> about this temple being built. I want to go to Iceland. I've heard lots of stories about it. It's got deep pagan roots and beliefs that they still hold on to. It just sounds like a magical place to go and be a part of. So I don't know, maybe one day I'll be able to see the temple, but I really don't know much about it. Uh, if anybody lives in Iceland and is, knows anything about it, please comment down below. And even if, I don't know if you can take temp pictures of the temple being built, but maybe you can maybe you can't. If you can and you've taken them, please also put those down below or links to them. Um, but yeah, it's a really cool thing that it's being built. Um, I'm excited to see what happens with it. And and that's it. So I hope that my video helped. I, I Like I said, I feel a little apprehensive when I do videos in regards to college dorms because I never lived in one. So I kind of have to take the... the limitations that you have in a, in a college dorm and associate them to me having the limitations of living in a home where I wasn't able to freely practice my magic the way I always did and um, with constant interruptions and people not really respecting my space and what have you which feels like it could be associated with a college dorm but again I don't know all the logistics of that so I hope it helped. Uh, if anybody has any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below. I love hearing from everybody as usual. And um, I hope everybody has a great rest of the weekend. And until next time, blessed be. Bye.